Well, g'day, and thanks for joining me for week number three in our Chronological Bible in a Year Reading Challenge. Today, we're back in the book of Genesis, reading from chapters 12 through to 29. But until then, sit back and enjoy today's tutorial. But essentially, kicking off in Genesis 12 uh, with what I like to call the age of the patriarchs. Okay, so Genesis 1 to 11, the age of the ancients, now kicking in to the age of the patriarchs, the age of the founding fathers of Israel. Remember, the book of Genesis is a book of origins. It is a book of beginnings. And the focus of Genesis is about the origins of the Hebrew people. It's all about the origins or the Genesis of God's covenant people, essentially Israel. Where did Israel come from? Who are these people? That's why the Torah um, was established. It's to convince God's people as they're going into Canaan, into the promised land under the leadership of Moses, really Joshua, as they go into the promised land, that these people have an identity, all right? They're not a bunch of nobodies. They're not just a bunch of slaves, random people out of Egypt that are following some peculiar voice, all right? No, 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 no. These people have an identity that is rooted in a long genealogy. And so that's why the opening chapters of Genesis really focus on the genealogies. You've got Adam and Eve, and after Cain kills Abel, the genealogy focuses on the next son, who is Seth. Cain's line, you don't hear that much about, all right? We kind of forget about them. And the focus is on the line of Seth. Then Noah kind of has a fresh start. He's got three sons. And although you hear a little bit about the first two sons, the focus of the genealogy is on the third son, who is Shem. So these genealogies, the focus of these genealogies is to build us from Adam to Abraham. And then ultimately, the readings we're starting now, from Abraham to Egypt, from Abraham to Moses. Where the heck do these slaves get their lineage from? Well, this is easy. This is the story of the patriarchs. This is why this is recorded. It's to give God's people a confidence boost that they know where they come from. They know who their daddy is, all right? They know who their forefathers are. And secondly, that they know that the promised land that Moses is saying, I want you to go into, they know that that land has been promised to them way back. All right. It's not just something that Moses pulled out of his thumb. You know, when Moses was in the promised land, he thought, oh, this is a great idea. I'll, I'll gather me an army together and take it over. No, 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 no. This group of people have a legacy right back to Abraham. And it is that father who was promised this land. So we have a legal right to it. And not only that, but the people who are in that promised land currently, the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, etc., we have a record of their genealogy. They came from the other sons of Noah. All right. But we are the ones who God promised this land to. So that's why the book of this book of origins has been written to really give God's uh, people a confidence boost as they move in to the promised land. So again, that is where our head needs to be at. Incidentally, um, Shem, okay, from Noah's son Shem, that comes into Abraham and Isaac and Jacob ultimately, that is where we get the word Semite. Okay, so some of you have heard um, people refer to Jewish people as Semites. You know, if someone is anti-Jewish, they are anti-Semitic. Uh, that word comes from Shem. Okay, so that's the origins of that. So Shem's line, Adam through Noah to Shem, okay, and Shem to Abraham. And that's where we're reading today. We're picking up from Genesis 12 in the stories of the founding fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What are you going to read this week? is all about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their wives and their sons. And you're basically going to read right up to when uh, Jacob gets married, essentially. And that's where we're going to stop this week. A few things I want you to notice. The first is that we have some repeated motifs, okay? Some repeated themes that all of these three men, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, see happen to them. Number one, their wives, their favorite wife, uh, are all barren. They struggle to fall pregnant. But when they do fall pregnant, it is a sign that the son that woman gives birth to is a promised son, a special son. The other thing that happens with those special sons is that they are persecuted, all three of them. Okay, we've got um, Abraham gave birth to, uh, what was it, Ishmael and Isaac. And then we've got Jacob and Esau. And then we've got Joseph and the boys. Okay. Each of these younger brothers were persecuted 
from the older brother, which takes us right back to the story of Cain and Abel, where Cain, the older brother, kills his brother Abel. This is a motif that is all the way through Genesis and ultimately carries us through to the first century. When Jesus comes along and he tells the parable of the prodigal son, where guess what? The older brother persecutes the younger brother, that Jesus relates that story, the older brother being the first century religious Jews, the younger brother being the Gentiles, okay, the sinners that are coming into the covenant world, that are coming into God's kingdom, and the older is persecuting the younger. Paul talks about this in Galatians, the old covenant and the new covenant community. So it's just amazing that God has set up the story right from the word go to have these motifs carry all the way through. That is why Genesis is not just a history book, all right? It is a prophetic book. It is filled with prophetic imagery and prophetic pictures that carry us through literally all the way through to the book of Revelation. So I want you to keep an eye out for that. The second thing you really need to know when you read Genesis, or the second thing that we're really going to pay attention to this week, is the notion of covenant and the Abrahamic covenant. Now, those who know me well know that uh, years ago I wrote a book called He Qualifies You. All right, looks like this. I'm going to give this shamelessly give this a plug, all right, because this week on Valentine's Day 2010 uh, marks the anniversary where I published this book, and this week it's also available in electronic format. You can go to my website, i5812.org, and check that out. It's now in six or seven different languages, it's gone all over the world, and now finally we've got it on Amazon Kindle, um, on iTunes, and uh, in the next few weeks, hopefully, I'll be working on an audible, uh, an audio book of He Qualifies You as well. So stay tuned for that, I'll let you know when that happens. But the idea of He Qualifies You was to look at the three major covenants of the scripture, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. The first one is Abraham. And the most remarkable thing that you are going to be reading this week is that God promises Abraham and his sons a special blessing. Some people believe that Abraham had two covenants. One was a relational blessing and one was a promise of the promised land. Okay, so whether there's two separate covenants or one composite covenant, you can come to that conclusion yourself. But the point is this. In the Abrahamic era, in the age of the patriarchs, okay, God blessed his people on the basis of a covenant of pedigree. Because Abraham was a man of faith and God made a blood oath to him to bless him and to bless his descendants. It didn't matter how those descendants behaved. It didn't matter what kind of wild morality or poor attitudes that they had. God committed to blessing Abraham and his descendants because they were part of Abraham's birth, birth line. They were part of his birthright. And so as you read the stories of Genesis this week, you're going to see some very questionable morality in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, they're a bunch of thieves. They're a bunch of liars. They will half truth tellers at the very least, right? And their sexual conduct conduct is highly questionable. Yet what you're going to see in these stories is that God never judges them, never punishes them, never rebukes them, because his covenant with them in this era has nothing to do with their behavior. God blesses them regardless of their behavior. He blesses them on the basis of their birthright because they are circumcised sons of Abraham. They qualify for God's blessing. If that doesn't make much sense to you, you really need to get my book. All right, check it out, i5812.org. Get the book or check out my personal YouTube channel. You can see me preaching on that. Anyway, enjoy Genesis this week. Again, your readings are from chapter 12 through to chapter 29. And then next week, we're going to kick into essentially the story of Joseph and cap off the book of Genesis and head into Exodus. Guys, bless you. I'm so thrilled you're doing this. And again, uh, feel free to invite people to get on board. A great week to start with us here in Genesis chapter 12. Uh, so we'll see you next weekend. Okay, bye. That's it for today's lesson. I really hope you enjoy your readings this week. Remember, allow yourself time to read as much as you can in one sitting. Don't get lost in the detail. Just keep going and watch the Bible's big story unfold before you. Remember also to hit me up on our social media channels or website, and I'll see you next time.